Hey guys, Steve Houston. Welcome back to my channel. Today we got a little special thing going on for you. We've been talking a lot about leads. Maybe we've exhausted the subject, but leads keep coming up a lot. I got a lot of texts, a lot of emails, a lot of phone calls from agents, people that are considering the industry, all kinds of, there's a lot of misinformation in the marketplace about leads. And so we've been putting these videos out uh, the last week or so. The last, just to make it clear something up for you that are returning back to my channel again, is the last couple of videos have been recorded in mono only. In other words, you're getting only left channel. That was an error. Hopefully we fix the issue now and won't be an issue ongoing. But if you're having an issue with it, make sure you're getting not just stereo, but mono because the audio is actually there and I appreciate your support. Thank you for understanding that. Uh, give me a thumbs up on that video if you would. The second one we just released was the part two, which I thought was really, really good and, and shared a lot of valuable information on how the, lay, the leads actually break down. We talk about three different things. We talk about the lead type, the lead conversion ratio, and a lead mindset. So if you haven't watched that yet, I'll try to remember to put the link up here in the corner. So please go back and take a look at that. So this week uh, for this Saturday video, and again, we're going to a more of a Wednesday and Saturday release. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to be doing other things in between that, but you can get count on a Wednesday and a Saturday video going forward. Uh, so make sure you're, you're subscribed, you hit the thumbs up, and you hit that bell for notifications. So today I want to kind of bring in someone that many of you know. We've had, you've been on the channel before. Uh, Angela is uh, uh, a, a top six-figure producer for many years, not just a flash in a pan, but she came in this industry working on leads. She's never done anything else but leads, whereas I started this industry working as a captive agent and didn't have leads. And so it kind of having the availability of leads and building a leads-based business just changed my income. It put in, it, it, it went into the stratosphere. Went from thirty-five to 50000 bucks a year to several hundred thousand dollars a year on my own pen. So, but again, Angela's perspective is a little different because she came in this industry. She was as an underwriter. She was working with me and helping me get ready for my appointments and cases, doing the dials, booking the appointments and all those things. And then later became an agent and bought leads right, right from the start. So I wanted to have her on because she has hit the elite producer status with our IMO for several years running. Multiple six figures. Consistent production week after week, year after year. And again, she's worked a lot of different types of leads from a lot of different types of vendors. So I thought she would add some real perspective for many of you that are either considering the business or uh, are in the business and struggling to scale your income. Let's face it, as you've heard me say in the last couple of videos, you don't need leads to be successful in this business. You need leads to scale your income in this business because the warm market the cold market, you know, generating your own leads sooner or later that 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 isn't scalable, right? It's it's a it's it's a hit and miss. It's up and down, and we should all be doing that to mix in with our leads. Leads give us guaranteed conversations, and conversations equal more applications written, and you getting make you earning more money. That's the idea, right? So. Uh, I'm not here to tell you that you had to have buy leads, although this is a leads-based industry that we're currently in where you get these you know, multiple six- and seven-figure earners because of the leads, right? We can scale our income. And the ability to work from virtual or face-to-face -face also changes the dynamics a little bit. So I wanted to bring on Angela. So you heard my intro. We were discussing the last couple of videos on the leads. You had some things that you thought uh actually i thought were very valuable and, and that you wanted to share and I, I thought maybe this would be a good place to share them you got a lot of people that have watched the first video but i wanted to kind of bring you in as a producer and you know coming into industry buying leads right from the start you never really have worked a in a captive situation and had to generate your own leads you've been buying leads. i wanted to share uh what you uh, feel is good for either a new agent that's looking at this business or an agent that's buying leads right now and struggling. The whole idea, the impetus of this whole video was that I had a conversation with somebody on, on, on in the comments section that had made 3,500 dials and didn't book a single appointment. And you and I both said that's there's no way mathematically that can happen. So, again, welcome to this week's call, and I'll let you go after it. 
Well, a couple things that you just brought up. And one, I've always approached things. Yes, I've always been on the production side. I've always been on the lead side. Now, I've worked my warm market, you know, my family, my friends. Uh, I don't let opportunities pass me by when I run across somebody that I think that it could benefit or they, you know, I never miss an opportunity for somebody to ask me what I do. Um, but when it comes to the consistency of, of running a business, the consistency of having an insurance organization, you, you, I think you do one of two things. You, you either have a marketing arm, right? Which is very, very, very expensive and risky and lots of, you know, trial and error, or you work a leads system and, you know, a marketing arm is going to look like, you know, just mailing out flyers or postcards to zip code after zip code after zip code, hoping that you find the needle in the haystack. But when you're working a leads, when you're working the when you're working this business from the leads perspective, you, you know that somebody has at least said, hey, I'm interested. I, I have some questions. I want some information. And I've always approached, and this is part of my personality. It's not just in this business. I tend to do it with a lot of things. I have always been pretty, I'm kind of a logical thinker. Um, I uh, tend to not always take things right on their face value. Um, you know, I, uh, I'm i just a pretty logical, I, I think things out in a pretty logical, uh, you know, method. And so when it comes to leads, I look at them, you know, the same way. And one of the things that I see, I think that not only new agents, but agents in general tend to fall into the trap of, especially when leads are, you know, there's good times in this business and not so good times in this business. There's times when the leads are super productive and there's times when you have to work more leads in order to write business. And one of the things that I see happening a lot, and it's kind of a lot of people playing word salad is how I look at it, you know you are working with an IMO or with a marketing organization, you know, you've got your license set up with whatever IMO you're, you're working with and you go into their portal or you go to a leads company and the leads company or the, or this leads portal, whatever you're working says, you know, this person, you know, here are the leads that are available and here are the different, like you went through on your videos, you know, here are the different lead levels. Um, and this person's not been sold insurance. And that's a big trap because people read that and they take it right on on its face value and they say, "Look, Mary Smith purchased a home. She did a she she bought a home. She filled out this lead letter and sent it in, and it's three years old. I'm going to pay a nickel for it, and she's never bought any insurance. It, probably not true, right? You know." marketing companies, lead companies, your IMO, whoever's generating the leads, there are multiples of them. There are hundreds of them, I'm sure. So when somebody buys a home and this data becomes available or refinances a home, or if you're working Medicare and they become Medicare eligible, or, you know, all the different types of leads that are out there, uh, you have to remember that they're being marketed by multiple different organizations. So this one particular letter that they sent back in, they may not have been sold insurance off of that one letter, but they probably got 10. I mean, I, or maybe more when we bought our home. Oh my goodness. We almost had to, you know, we had a, a box of these lead letters that came in simply we because still have them. Yeah, we still have them because you know, that information is public. Um, it's public information. Anyone can either purchase it or download it. And marketing companies are going to market to those people to see if there's interest. That's the way the world works. And then people fill the letter out and they say, I'm interested. And you don't know how many times that they've done that. You don't know if the other agents that they talked to, they just didn't click with. You don't know if the other agents tried to offer them, you know, one particular product. Maybe they were captive. Maybe they only had the ABC product and you have something else. There are all of these different aspects to what we do and layers to it. But the most important thing I think to remember is a lead is somebody who said, I might be interested in this. They didn't say, here, here's my money. Please take it. I'm ready to buy. They, they simply expressed, they got the letter, they read it or some of it or none of it or all of it. And they said, hey, I might be interested. Or they went online and said, filled in their information with a phone number and said, hey, call me. I might be interested in this. And 
I just think you have to look at things from that logical, you know, sit back and think it out. You think that somebody bought a home, this one person bought this home and they got one letter in the mail and they filled it out and sent it back in and they just sat back waiting for someone like you to spend $1 or $2. You know, we see these leads for 50 cents, $2, $3, you know, yeah. they've been worked. Um, and that, in my opinion, and I'll end with this, is the advantage of buying the freshest lead that you can possibly buy and spending the money to invest in your business. Otherwise, it's not a business. So let me ask you, I, I'm going to put something on your screen there. Those, I took these right, right from the notes there. You think these, are, we, and we've been talking about lead ratios, right? Because I think, I, you know, in the last video that, if you haven't watched it, like I said, go watch it. I, it we, we talked about, or I talked about, um, there's three things you got to know. One is the lead type. One is the, then it includes the conversion ratio. And then you have, and that creates the right, you go into booking your appointments, having the right mindset, which I think is critically important because the mindset sets you up for what you expect to get from the leads. So if you have the right, wrong expectation, you're automatically going to lose right out of the gate. So in other words, if you, if you, if you think you're going to buy a $6 lead and you're going to, you know, buy five of them, and you're going to book three appointments. You're setting yourself up for failure, right? And then discouragement, and, and you know, then the scam, and I mean, I'm being taken advantage of nonsense kind of start, starts out. But the, what, what, what are your thoughts on these ratios? I think that these ratios are pretty accurate. I would say, I mean, looking at the A leads, I work A leads. I work between five and ten on average a week, probably usually closer to ten. Um, you know, depending on the time of the year and depending on the on the response. Uh, you know, that I get from, from my A's, but, uh, I would say these are pretty accurate. The only caution, my only disclaimer is this, you know, looking at those C leads, you can't buy 10 leads and expect, we talk about the law of large numbers. And I think that sometimes people look at that and they go, Oh, one out of 10 will book an appointment. Well, I only have time this week to run one appointment. So I'm going to buy 10 and one of them will book, you know, it may take you, you may have to buy 50 to book your five and your five may come in that last batch. I mean, so yeah, you, and, that, and that's a very good numbers. point because you know, I'm sorry, I mean, in a, in a, in a, there's no. a delay here, but that's a very good point. And, and it, I think that's where people go, go wrong. And I was just thinking that when you were talking, if you look at that graph and it says one out of 10 and we've had agents on our team do the exact same thing, but they, they buy 10. Right. And they expect to get one appointment out of it. Right. And that's not what that chart is saying. It's talking about over the law of large numbers, C leads. Will you you should expect to get one appointment for every ten leads, but you can't buy ten and get one because that's a lot of low numbers, not large numbers. And when and then to just just said the end there, you, if you go buy C leads, you need to buy lots of C leads right. to average one. It's an average one appointment for every ten leads that you bought. So if you bought fifty, you can expect five appointments potentially. The more leads you buy, the more those averages are going to pay out because, again, or, or prove out because, again, it's the large law of large numbers, which are always going to be going to, going to be uh, real, uh, realistic, and the law of low numbers will never be. So that's the point. Is uh, and we've talked about this before with our own agency agents. It's not necessarily about the type of lead; it's more about the about the lead spend. Mm -hmm. So if you only have five hundred bucks, you got a choice: you can buy five or ten A leads at eighty-five bucks a piece. And if you're brand new, I don't recommend that, right? Or because again, you know, you need you need you need practice. You need you need, you need more swings at bat. We talked about that in the past too. I'd rather see you buy five hundred dollars worth of C leads. Mm -hmm. And and where they how much they, how much worth of C leads? I think I can't remember. It was, Two I, bucks. I show there. Two bucks. So from if you have five hundred dollars spend, you're gonna be able to spend. You're gonna be able to buy two hundred fifty leads, right? So then you can then the law of large numbers are going to work in your favor. That's that's what I want to talk about. Plus, the, all of these things are you, if you're buying leads from a lead vendor that, that isn't giving you the breakdown, and they may be not be giving you the right breakdown. There might be an advantage to not be truthful, and we've had those lead vendors here. Maybe you want to talk about that, Angela. But they all should have something in writing. This is something that that we have with ours. It tells you exactly what you're buying. You can see on the screen there. The A lead was, was, was not purchased within 60 days, becomes an A1 lead. So they moved down the chart, right? So you have, you have the prices there and you have the, the, uh, the history of the lead and what you, and what you can expect, right? And again, 
the only reason why a producer like Angela would spend more money, and Angela, you do buy uh, direct mail A leads on a weekly basis, but you also buy aged leads. Talk about that for a second, please. So if I am having a week where, you know, and summertime is always weird because you have times in summer, you know, you have blocks of time during the summer where, you know, vacations are very high. August is a weird month because in August you have people trying to sneak in those last little bits of vacation at the beginning of the month and towards the middle of the month, everybody's getting their kids back to school and that kind of thing. So, you know, at, you have to kind of step it back to figure out, you know, if leads are on average, if somebody closes a home in April or May, it's probably going to be June or July before you start seeing the lead data, lead actual leads come back in available for you to purchase. So you kind of have to forecast and think about the fact that there are going to be changes in the time of the year and the season and all that kind of good stuff. So, and that affects the lead ratios. All of this is based on typically Again, unless you're working something like Medicare or final expense leads or that kind of thing, there are ebbs and flows to the season. And so I fill in um, my A leads, my five to 10 A leads, especially if I'm not having a particularly great week um, booking the appointments or I may not be having a particularly great week closing the applications. Then I will fill in with leads, but I fill in with leads that are typically what we would consider a B lead. And that's usually sometime it's usually maximum about 90 days old from being an A. So it's probably somewhere around four or five months from when they originally got the lead letter or closed on the mortgage. So I don't fill in with stuff that's a year old and two years old. I don't, I don't have that kind of, I, and again, this is something, this is a comment. This is a, this will be a teaser for your next video. Um, I don't have that kind of time. And if you have a lot of time on your hands, I, I don't know that it still might would be my suggestion to work leads that are 50 cents that are two years old. Um, anyway, so that's how I fill in. I fill in with that type of a lead uh, when, I, when I need some extra yeah. leads. Yeah, and I guess the next question, we don't have time for it. I want to keep the video short for everybody because, again, we know that we know on YouTube, you get about five, six minutes, and we're past that. But, but we had some valuable information here. But again, with lead vendors, my next question was, how do you choose a lead vendor? And again, the, you did, what we tell, tell our agents is you, you, you work with several lead vendors, right? And here's the thing about lead vendors. First of all, you should, your IMO most likely will be the best resource because, again, that was on my first video, is they're, they're not in the lead business. They're in the insurance business. So the leads should be more reliable. Lead vendors are only in the business of product from selling you leads. It means they're going, to, they're going to distribute those leads over and over and over and over again. That being said, there are seasons, Angela, with every lead vendor. A lead vendor we used six months ago may not be any good today. Right. So the first thing I would look for is, are they putting it in writing? What, how, would they, how they the age of the lead, the price of the lead, what the history of the lead is? If they're not, I wouldn't even use them. That's the first mm -hmm. thing. Second thing was we tell our agents is buy some leads from, from several different vendors and see what your results are. Your yeah. results will determine what lead vendor you want to work with. But again, that may be work fine today. May, may not may not be fine in six months for today. So you got you got to have multiple lead vendors and kind of move, move your business around a little bit. And that's how you kind of stay stay active, stay stay consistent in your production. Would you agree? I would totally agree. It's no different than life. You know, you find something that you like and you buy it. And then five years later, they, they no longer sell it anymore. The company decided to stop making it. That's That's how life is. So you have to be willing to be a little bit flexible, even with this business. Totally agree. Thank you for being here. Appreciate you taking time out of your production. I know you're in the, right in the middle of setting your day up today, getting your appointments set. I saw, I saw some, some appointment confirmations coming in, so you got some appointments coming up today, and we'll have you back again. I appreciate your time, Lincoln. Thank you very much. Thanks. Have a great day, and we'll see you, God willing, on the next video. Bye-bye. See ya.